lights off? I got it. I got no. this. I got this. I got this. It's the fact that you had to say it 20 times. <laughs> Where is Justin? He may be still on his date. Oh, oh there he is. Nice of you to join us. So how was your birthday? Great. Mm. <laughs> Great. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I be about to jump out my seat when I get started and shit. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody, man? Welcome back to another episode of the What You Mean Podcast, man. I am your host, LaCheston. We are back for one of them episodes that we kind of sort of just slide in there where we can get in there. It's because right now the world is watching a hot show, hot new show, MTV's The Love Experiment. And we got somebody right here in the lab today that's gonna talk about a couple of things, give you guys some juice that you might not even know about. But I couldn't do this by myself, bro. I had to reach out to uh, one person that I'm actually a huge fan of, and y'all are a fan of as well, right here on 95.7 in Birmingham, Alabama. And those of you that listen all over the world on the 95.7 app, man. So without further ado, I wanna spin the table real quick and allow my guests to introduce themselves, man. And we are gonna go ahead and get this show on the road. Hey, what up, Marv? It's your boy, Justin Lockett. I'm here. I thank you for bringing me on another edition of What You Mean Podcast to talk about the love experiment and my experience there in Canada. Absolutely. And it's Kay Simone, you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Listen, we about to dive right into this thing. I'm really excited right now. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, since you you got all the energy, I know y'all hear that energy, right? I mean, it sounds like we at the radio station right now. <laughs> so you got all the energy. So I'm going to let you go ahead and take a stab and I'm going to jump in because Wait, I know. Wait, why you going to let me take well, a stab? I mean, I can take the range too. It ain't really don't matter. I no, mean, you, you, you're in the driver's seat. All right, I want so, you to so, drive so, right so, now. So, so here it is. So number one, you know what I'm saying? When we seen what we've seen, that's kind of sort of doing this thing, making this viral way around the internet and people waiting on you to give an explanation. We gonna get there, you know what I'm saying? We know that's, we know that's the nitty gritty of what we need to talk about. And also like, what can we expect in this next episode that's coming up, uh, you know what I'm saying, on Tuesday night, you know what I'm saying? So if you're watching this right now, make sure you go ahead and start being watching so you can be in the seat and ready for Tuesday night. Well, um, here's the thing. If you didn't binge watch yet, just wanna let you you know we about to binge it for you real quick so you go ahead and watch it <laughs> because i i you know uh ain't no shout out to spectrum right now spectrum is not anybody in the world's favorite company right now because they just dropped disney and all of the sports channels so i had to actually find a whole nother service so that i could figure out how i was going to watch it because i know when i talked to justin and he was like hey man have you seen i was like bro outside of the premiere party you know what i'm saying i have not seen it. he was like what's up bro and i'm like I like to watch it from beginning to end. Like, I don't like having to wait a whole week to see the next episode or whatever it's going to be. But with that being said, I've already seen, you know, episode one because of the premiere that you had in Madison at the Bar and Lounge. It was dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I took the liberty last night of watching two, three, and uh, four. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I want to kind of sort of go back to – the initial thing of when you first got the call to be part of this show, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what were, what were the, like the major things that stuck out to you about being able to be a part of this experiment? So when I first got, it was a DM. And when I first got the message, I didn't even believe it because a lot of times these recruiters hit you up from pages that don't have no mm -hmm. followers and not following anybody. So I thought it was scam. Right. So then somebody else did it. And I was like, well, maybe this is true. So then those conversations picked up, but we were also in the pandemic. So it took a while, mm. um, but then we went ahead and did it. Uh, we went up to Mexico, Vancouver, well, we went up to Mexico, we went up to Vancouver, Canada. Mexico was one of the places we was going to potentially go. We went to Vancouver, Canada. We filmed it. Um, we had a great time, but I didn't know what to, what to expect um, initially. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, because, okay, so here's the thing. All right, so the DM happened, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what Love Island tried to get me like that, too. One of <laughs> really? the casting directors for Love Island. I wasn't in a relationship at the time, so I was like, yeah, I can't I can't even do this. You know, I can't do it. 
But yeah, that's how they got me. Damn, why you didn't go? Because I wasn't in a relationship. You supposed to just make one up. Nah, I was cool. I, you she know said what? I was cool. I, I, I'm <laughs> all right. I'm you can't right. go on that show single? Well, I think they were picking singles, but when they casted me, they were looking for me to be in a relationship oh, with somebody. Got it. Got gotcha. Yeah, so one of the casting directors had reached out to me. So how did, like, what made you say, all right, listen, it's not a scam. I know, like, somebody else did it or whatever, but what was that initial thing to say, all right, this is not a scam? Because normally you um, get some emails. <laughs> once, once we got the real emails and then we actually had phone calls and video calls and I realized that okay. this is legit and I was able to ask questions and they were able to answer those questions mm -hmm. um, it took away all my doubts okay, okay. So, so anybody else get recruited they slide in your DMs I just wanted to <laughs> got you. so let's go uh, we ain't gonna start at episode one I don't want to start at episode one. No, we got to. We got to take these people on a journey. All right, so, okay? so, er, so episode one, bro, we see you walk in. We see you post up. You know what I'm saying? We see you got your little cubicle area on the on, on, on the on the plan or whatever the case may be on the set. And you see these three women walk in. Uh, like, what's what's your first take when you see the first three women? Like, was I, I, I we, we, for those of us that are watching, yeah. uh, it's spoiler alert real quick because we're not made it to episode, you know, two or three yet. So you can figure out what's really going on. So Justin right now is in cahoots with uh, one of the, the casting members. Her name is Paige. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you first seen those three women come down the hallway, as they call it, like what was your first take? Did you think Paige was going to be the one that, that you was going to try to advance on? Or you was hoping to pick you or you didn't matter. It didn't matter. Absolutely. It was Paige. Um, so when the door is open, she and I locked eyes. Right. Mm. And the energy was so strong that she came to me and they had to be like, cut, cut. Hey, let's do this again. <laughs> right. For <laughs> real. <laughs> right. But ultimately, I and mean, you saw it on camera when, right. when she came, but that how that's how that energy came. And so for me, once I felt that energy between the two of us, mm -hmm. no disrespect to the other two, I wasn't looking at them anymore. I got you. Got it. How was that standing behind the door though? And you like they saying all this crazy stuff. You don't find out what they say until it actually airs. So you gotta stand there with with what, what was y'all listening yeah, to? Yeah, what was that about, going on in y'all like, ears? What was y'all like, listening to? So, so we had um whatever just like any music you want to hear, like okay. the hottest hit, right? But we had oh, they did that. In. They appled him, right? Yeah. You know how they appled you like <laughs> press one for jazz, press two for country. Hell no. <laughs> but what's, what's funny was you could hear them, right? But I was explicitly told, don't say nothing, right? So some guys oh. did. So that's why when she was standing there talking to me, I was like. <laughs> she was like, you can't hear me? I was like. Because I, <laughs> hey, they said. <laughs> I know she was looking at you like you was a motherfucking cookie or something. Like yeah. they had the other two girls had to pull away. Like, okay, let's go see who the rest no, are on the floor. But I'm gonna tell you what got me in that whole process, right? So they over there scoping them out. I mean, picking them like looking at these men like they meet. Like, oh, I just want to bite. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. Well, at least that goes to show that you know when it does come to the physical and it does come to sexual attraction that women feel just like we feel they yeah. just don't act on it as much as we do yeah, yeah absolutely you know what I'm saying? So, absolutely they had their own bird calls yeah. for sure i okay, got you so uh <laughs> first episode we kind of sort of figure out you know how you going to be pursuing or what you're going to be doing uh did y'all have an elim elimination on the first episode yes they did yeah it was one yes one. they did yeah. mm -hmm. did absolutely. you did you did you feel safe on the first episode? No, the that's not that's not the question you should be asking. <laughs> you should be asking, how do you feel that she didn't choose you to go on that first date? Oh, shit. Because, well, <laughs> see, I want to get there when we get to episode first, three. Because the first, the first been... date, no, the first date is everybody that got eliminated. So if you went on the first mm. date, first episode, you went on that first date, exactly. right? It was like, okay, you everybody got the text. All right, so look, you can save this person or you can go back to the, what is it, the hall? Of, yeah, go the, back hall. To the hall. Yeah, you can go back to the hall and you can pick somebody, right? So people was real salty that they didn't go on that first date. Right, but aren't you right. happy that yeah, you didn't go on that I first date? Knowing what I know now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, no, I ain't even think about it like that. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and I, guess, I guess at the end of the day, it's like, for me, I'm like, okay, cool, like, I'm sitting in Madison in the lounge and I'm looking at the TV and I'm like, oh, golly. First off, I'm blow. I'm like, this nigga real on TV. <laughs> All right, so this nigga real on TV. And then number two, I'm like, I'm looking like, 
I know you because me and you went to Troy together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I root from a little deep. So I'm, I'm, I looked at the three girls, and when I looked at the three girls, I already knew who was one you was gonna pick anyway out of the three. Mm-hmm. Again, no disrespect to the ladies, and no disrespect to y'all. <laughs> uh, so, so first day happens. Uh, uh, did you? Uh, I didn't give you the answer, to, uh, the opportunity to answer the question because I slid in right as she got done talking. But she did ask, "How did you feel? Did you answer? You did answer the question. No, I ain't said nothing." About, okay, how did you feel? <laughs> how did you feel? How did you feel about not getting chosen for the first date? Well, I didn't expect to get chosen for the first date because of the fact that I had to become acclimated with so many cameras being in my face on mm. a date, right? And naturally, my personality is one that's more of an introvert. And yeah. so now they're like, hey, we need you to go sit down. You're going to go on a date with her. And I don't know her, right? And so I sit down, and she's sitting here fixing herself. It got her makeup people. I'm sitting here like, we still haven't said a word. And they're like, ready? And I'm like, damn, these cameras. Um, um, mm. And so I wasn't, but it wasn't, that I, it wasn't that I was nervous because it was her. It was so many you know, things going like, on yeah. around. I'm like, man, what are we doing? How can you be yeah. comfortable in, yeah. that, in that type of situation? So I can't get it. It took me a minute to get used to the situation. So right. I was more trying to get a feel of what we were doing and so I wasn't saying, so I was actually, she pulled me aside and was like, man, you need to talk, say something, do something. For real? I'm, I'm just grabbing my cup like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I didn't have an expectation um, that I was going to get picked on the first one. Mm-hmm. But once we had those, that mingle and we had that first date, um, I had an opportunity to now start getting kind of comfortable with the fact that the cameras were around and I found my way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then that first date, it was a nightcap. Shout out to my girl Paige. I see you, girl. So look, it was a it was a nightcap for the first one. Like everybody else had the you know little fun dates, mm-hmm. but she got to end with a nightcap. What happened? Is that, that is, is that the night you stayed over? Yes, that's yeah. the night he stayed over. So so I really feel like the nigga Chris gonna put hands on you, bro. <laughs> like I, like I, I really feel like it, it, and and and. You know, no disrespect to the, the the LBGT you know community. No disrespect to to, to any of that at all. With no homo. You no. know what I'm saying? The nigga real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was because I've been scoping it out, and I'm really trying not to take out too fast. I'm not trying to take out too. But bro, it seemed like every time there is any type of opposition in the room, it's him. Yeah. It's him. It's like. Anytime you feel some type of way, it got something to do, do it, with Chris. this guy. That's for you sure. We're going to jump into episode two in just a second. But what happened? <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> At her. the nightcap. <laughs> okay. So, really, you saw us sitting on the floor talking on my birthday, right? We Absolutely. Right. And I think where Paige was, was Justin wasn't giving her enough. Justin wasn't giving me enough, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's what her mind was. And so, we sat down and we talked. We started on the couch talking. Mm-hmm. We ended up on the floor talking. We probably sat there three, four hours maybe. The camera people left. They came back. And I think, I mean, she was sitting like, I'm sitting like this. She's right here. Mm. And we're feeling each other. So I think it just turned into, hey, why don't we just why finish don't you stay? But nothing happened. We went upstairs. We kept talking. We laughed. Um, did you spoon? That, no. Well, Yes, they did. Y'all spoon. Yes, they did. Y'all spoon. You don't got to answer. Hey. Ah, y'all spoon. <laughs> no, what you call them? She sleep right here. Uh. Y'all spoon. She yeah. stuff on your chest, y'all yeah. spoon. And yeah, you, that's you, had, you had the one arm around yeah, her. Yeah, y'all spoon. Was it there sleep you when you was it was, was the arm sleep when you got up? Mm, no, no. You yeah. play too much. <laughs> <'Cause> they, they, <laughs> they, 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 they moved. <laughs> no, but no, no, no. She, she, she slept more on my chest, so my arm was kind of like she was her head and her. No, but that's the best. That's the best times though. Like yeah. when you could just vibe with somebody. Yeah. And you know, like y'all can just enjoy each other's company I, and have like a great conversation. It speaks to the level know? of intimacy that, sure. that can really be shared between two individuals. And that's For the sure. energy she and I shared a lot. Yeah. Was one that she's just easy she was easy to talk to, she mm-hmm. was easy to laugh with, joke with. Um the only thing I think that I didn't like was when I came back the morning after and I sat on the couch and I had that goofy ass smile on my face where it was looking like I was You did to, something, yeah. Right? Because I never insinuated that I did, right? But the way it you looks, played that game though, 
I ain't, I can't sit here. I, I love you. You my friend. But you played that game when you came back too, though. Because, I'm, you know, with me watching what was going on in the room, why these Negroes play, play, shooting pool, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case may be, the one person, again, that we just Chris, got to talk about, did you enjoy he was your like birthday? the ringleader. Like, yeah, what was going on? What happened? And then you had this other dude, I don't remember who, exactly who it was, but he was eating it on. Like, where's Justin? Oh, Y'all yeah. seen Justin? Justin's oh, yeah. not around. Like, where he at? Or whatever. And then you come back in, sneaking in and gritting and shit. You see and on and shit and everybody like well what happened you like well you know you always playing like that good guy role like good guys never tell like and if i don't say anything i'm not admitting to anything but i'm not you well, you you wanted their minds to roam bro and, and figure out what really happened right did you did so, you want that no so without the risk of telling things to happen behind the scenes they explicitly asked me did that happen i explicitly said no no absolutely right? they just didn't put that on air gotcha. so that's why i'm they saying did say, they, they did put it in there after the fact they did say that you you did say no i i believe i saw that yeah i heard that i too. heard that yeah, i didn't say no like more towards the it end was, of the conversation more towards the end of yeah. the conversation because what happened was it was the grin and i think that was the production side of things yeah. it was just like hey let's let's you know linger on this this yeah, smile leave a little bit yeah. leave I'm that just, cliffhanger yeah, yeah. just sitting there looking like yeah yeah, yeah you sure. look like a chest cat straight <laughs> up he was like it was almost like yeah bro like you look guilty bro like yeah. you ain't saying nothing you like you ain't giving no definite answer so yeah you, that you in a different space because one part of you is like you looking at them like, yeah, okay, we just hung out, and you know they feel some sort of way. But on the other side, you trying to make sure that you don't disrespect her. Right. right? Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. So now we're what episode three? No, we're episode two. We're still right? episode but, two. But here's the thing: I want to ask this question: How do you feel as a man being in an environment where you're competing for a woman? That's a really good question. I mean, um, I never really thought about a competition mm -hmm. um i think i thought more about three women being able to make a decision and my responsibility is being myself right yeah. and so if Paige was to choose preston isaac chris whomever that's her choice right but my responsibility is not so much to pay attention to what you doing is to pay attention to what i'm doing and give her the ability to make that choice so I don't think I really put myself in the mindset of i'm competing with chris right i just mm -hmm. thought more like I'm just going to be myself. Like, if she's spending time with Chris, she's spending time with Chris. She's spending time with me. I'm going to make the most of that. And that's the way I conducted myself throughout the show. For um, sure. I think that's a great but answer, think, man. But just to be, because this is content, bro. Just keeping the book. I have to say that your facial expressions did not say that. <laughs> no, not 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 when she kissed, you know, Chris. That's episode two. We'll get into that. But <laughs> but before we get into that, right, because here's the thing. I think the one person that actually kept it 100% genuine to the competition there is Kenny, which is why I can resonate with Kenny a little bit. Like, this is what you signed up for. Because yeah. at the end of the day, ultimately, yes, mm -hmm. you can say I'm not, like, I don't feel like I'm competing, but this is what you're doing. You're competing, right? Mm -hmm. So, but Kenny, on the other hand, it was like, I'm just going to let you do what you want to do. And if you want to come to me, then I'm right here, you know, and I can yeah. resonate that resonate with that, you know, because that that's yeah. a man's position. But you know but, what I mean? But not to take us too far left, you know what I'm saying? To, to deviate from from everything. I think at the end of the day that regardless of whether it's being recorded or not, when it comes to a woman, every man is competing. Because with the access that people have nowadays, I mean, it used to be the the, the access you had to somebody was church was the club, was uh, school, was mm -hmm. hallway, was college, were, was those things. Now you have immediate access to people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I could pick up my phone and DM anybody in the world that has an Instagram. Yeah. But that doesn't you know mean saying? that you, okay, I get it. I totally understand that. But just because you have access to somebody does not mean, that does not mean you have options. But it does, I, I, I disagree. I disagree I, It totally. doesn't mean you have options. Because at the end of the day, this is, the, you're avatars to me, right? If I follow you on Instagram, I never met you, we may talk on live, you're still an avatar to me because I don't know you you right so at the end of the day it's like are you really an option i don't know you you don't know me from a can of paint i feel you but i don't think that women that's how all women think i think no, for you're sure. probably that's maybe not, a one percent for of women sure that's not that, how that all women think, think like that i mean because sure. like literally i think each and every guy even you could probably contest to this you know what i'm saying we know at the end of the day, even when you're in an active relationship with a woman that you absolutely love and adore, you know she respects you, she honor you, it's still 10 Negroes in her DM 
like that's waiting on you to do something wrong and but fail. And sure? I think that conveys. I I think every woman has guys in their DMs, their messages. And even if Bro, they you already your host. That's a lie. I'm not. I'll show you my DMs. I don't want to <laughs> see that shit. I'll but, show you my DMs. But uh, you know, I kind of think like you know, a lot of times it's like, man, when she likes you, don't be concerned about who likes her. That's the way I look at it, right? Yeah. So you know, if this is my lady, if this is my woman, I'm really not concerned about who might be shooting. Naked. I can't. I can't stop them from doing that. We can't. Right? We can't. But you know, you just keep doing your job. Right. You're doing what you got to do, and. You don't have to worry about that because she's going to take care of you and take care of her business. And that's just. And, and that comes with a level of trust. And and, and, that, and that's the only thing that I'm trying to say is that whereas in, you know, we're looking at the love experiment and it is a competition. Yeah. You guys are trying to stand off in whatever ways that you're magnificent that yeah. naturally just convey from you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what your, your radiance is. That's what you're allowing for her to see. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that this simulation mm -hmm. of this experiment is real life. And it may not be in those close quarters, but those same type of environments are created for women all the time that may not yeah. necessarily be in your face is what I'm yeah. saying. And then real yeah. quick to go back to my answer, the reason why I answered it the way that I did is because it's a lot of times it's, Justin, it's your turn, right? And now I have to talk to you for however, however many minutes. And then now it's, you go back in there, now you come. And if I spend my time thinking about what you might have mm -hmm. done when you was in there, then I'm not really giving myself the opportunity to, to present my best Yeah, you're not capitalizing at all. Because I'm thinking about what you doing. Gotcha. Right. What you wearing. What, right? And so only thing I had to tell myself was just focus on you. And then when you mentioned that, that was the first time in my life I've ever had somebody that I'm dating kissing somebody in front of me. Right? So Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. That's what I'm saying. But that, And that's why I was like, I, I have to understand where Kenny was coming from. You know, I, I get it. Like. I don't know. You you remember who Kenny is, right? Because you're looking at me mm. like, who is Kenny? Mm. Kenny is Home ta girl. Tamara. Tamara's uh, first choice. Okay. The one that when everybody would, you know, parlay together and fellowship, you know, he was the one that set off to the side. This isn't the light skin dude, is it? Yes, uh, light skin, blue okay. eyes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what I'm saying. I kind of resonated with Kenny. Like, you know, it's just like, well, you're going to choose who you want to choose. You're going to choose to be around who you want to be around. I don't want to be in your face with everybody else being in your face, even though this is what you signed up for. Right. At the same time, I can respect that, though. Mm -hmm. I got you. I you got know? you. I got you. Yeah. So this is the What You Mean podcast, but this is the case of my own show, too, because, baby, she is taking lead. And I love <laughs> it. I, don't know. I love it. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. So are we still in episode two? Oh, no, we can go to episode, we can go to we, episode two now. We should be in three. We should be in three. No. Everything we just talked about was in two. The nightcap was in ended no, two. No, Kenny. Ended, yeah, so 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 we, oh, when two? we came into two, two, it was okay, after cool. the nightcap. Okay, cool. It, That's it, perfect. It, it, so three we should. Three began when I came home. Yes. Three okay. did begin when he came home. So, yeah, yeah. We, on, we on three now. I was going to say three came home, and uh, y'all did y'all think of three, and then towards the end of no. three is. When Paige kissed Chris, they was playing pool. Yeah. And Chris put was the that wager. before or after the talent show? That talent show was episode four. Episode so four. talent show is four. Yeah. Okay, so three is when. How did you feel about Paige kissing Chris? Man, I wish I had in my In front of your here. face. <laughs> Matter of fact, I just, if I can, y'all, I just put it up on the screen. You're looking at it right now. Huh? <laughs> I'm really attracted to Christopher, but Justin's in here. Like, like, yeah, what's your response? <laughs> how how did that make you feel? Because it was in your face. Like for you know, real, so you can't bro. lie about this one. I saw your face. <laughs> so how did I feel watching it, or how did I feel both? Okay. Yeah, like being there, like seeing it, like. So in the moment, mm, I can't, I can't say I was upset. Um, it was weird. I kind of thought it was different because of the fact that it was a bet, right? Um, I can't say that. I, I can't say that I was upset. I'm trying to remember how I felt at that moment. Um, I think I thought it was kind of silly. Like, if you remember when it happened, I was taking a sip, and I kind of raised my eyebrow. Um, so I think I thought it was more silly. Um, I think I was more annoyed at how the room was trying to make it more than what it was. What you okay. mean more than what it was? Because his face said it all. It was an and issue, then Jay. Somebody said, and then when Jay. somebody was like, how do you feel about that or something, somebody Jay, said no something. And you was like, it ain't got nothing to do. You know, I ain't mad about that. Like, it was just, you got a little offended, my boy. Bur yeah. You bro, got a little like, offended, You was sitting in the corner like, dude, like. You got a little offended, you know. <laughs> we, 
You know, man, I was you had like, a little so, mean face, and then Paige was like, <laughs> Paige was like, well, 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 did y'all see how Justin looked? And you know? she, like, she, like, I think she did it because she had to be a woman of her word. But no disrespect to you, Chris. No disrespect to you, my boy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think. She I don't think she wanted to, to do, do it, bro. Yeah. I don't think she wanted to do it. Chris, yeah. fine though. I'm not even gonna hold you. Hey, Chris. You're just saying that because you're alpha. <laughs> hey, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I probably I wasn't jealous, but I think I was upset with just the moment and how it went. That's and another I think it was unreal. I, I can't say that I was jealous, but it's the first time I'd ever seen. Like we are just trying to get a little pace of our mm -hmm. own, right? And now I'm sitting right here, standing here talking to the guys, and I'm like, "Well, damn, just just like that." Because right? you just coming off the right. night of spending the night yeah. with her. Well, here's the here's the thing, right? Because this this is the part that I really want to break down, right? Dating. How do we really define dating? Yeah. Because this is what dating is. It's just we're not in each other's face so, doing it. So, so, but let's break down dating uh, because uh, what we call talking phase is really dating. Okay, you know what so, I'm saying. So, so let's so 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 dating and talking are, are one and the same. Just the lingo. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just you For know. Sure. You people, so, so, so here's my thing. I I have had male friends that literally will say lie to me. Like if I'm in the dating phase or get to know phase of you and you're still doing your thug this will lie to me because I don't want to know. Like, like you rather be like, delusional? No, I don't think I don't think <laughs> men. All right, all right. So let me put it into perspective for you, okay. honestly. All right, all right. So if a man if a man is approaching you because you're honestly who he wants to be with, mm -hmm. he does not want to think about the fact that you're in this dating phase and you're with somebody else. That's not what he wants to mm -hmm. deal with. But you got the other guy, you got guy B on the other hand. If he's still playing the field just like you and just so quote unquote, the thing that y'all hate to hear nowadays, yeah, we could talk and get to know each other and if something pop off, it pop off. Y'all hate that shit now. Y'all don't want to hear that shit anymore. Like we done wore it out, you know what I'm saying? But that guy that's taking that approach with you that's still playing the field, of course he's not going to care if you out doing X, Y, Z or whatever the case may be because he's looking at it from a different perspective than the guy that is doing what Tamara said, quote unquote, when she was drinking coffee with old boy, dating with a purpose. Like if I'm dating you with a purpose, then that purpose needs to be reciprocated by showing me that I'm your purpose as well. But that's a conversation. You get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's still a conversation. It's, it has to be something like we have to agree to that. You know what I mean? So it's not just me and you start dating and then... If I was, you know, I get approached over here by Sean, you know, and Sean's like, hey, let, let's go to the pizzeria. Let's go get, you know, some ice cream. I'm going to take Sean up on his offer. You know why? Because we're not together. It's not solidified. Okay, so you, know you could go, so it's but, cool for but, you to go out with Sean or yeah. Kenny or Mike or John, whoever, the, whoever it is. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is here is what women may never understand because you're not a man. Mm-hmm. We are extremely territorial, right? For sure. All right. So let me Absolutely. finish. Let me finish. We're territorial, number one. Number two, number two, all right. If I'm dealing with you, I'm 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 and communication is key here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If I'm dealing with you and I see you as the woman I'm trying to be with, there is no room for that, period. Right. Like, like, like we don't. We may be Lorenz Tate and Love Jones mm -hmm. when Neil Long was getting ready to go back to New York when in his heart he didn't want her to go to New York. Right. But because he was trying to be on that B guy side of thing, he was like, yeah, well, go do your thing or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And he created an opportunity that he wasn't ready to deal with. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So guys that know what they want out of you are not going to be right. okay They're with They're not going to settle things. for that. And that's what I'm saying. And I think that you should communicate that. You get what I'm saying? Because that's that's what dating is. Dating is getting to know multiple people and figuring out who you like, which you don't like, maneuvering through different people. You don't have to have sex with different people to date people. And I think that's where the confusion comes into play. But if I'm meeting you and you say, listen, I'm dating with a purpose. I like you. I want to get to know you. And I would prefer it's a you and me thing versus you talking to X, Y, and Z because I really see something maneuvering with us, then that's one thing. You know what I mean? And that's something that I can respect. But if we're just dating to get to know each other and I'm weighing out options, just like you're weighing out options, that's dating. And that's what this love experiment is all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I feel you. Yeah, and this is like I said, it's the same thing. You're you're sitting here with with a double mindset. I just got vulnerable. I just opened myself up for hours talking to you. We had an intimate night, and then on the other hand, you're trying to respect the process, mm -hmm. right? And so it's a you're in a a weird space because it's like okay, I have to let this happen. It's just it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. But on one part, is you can't sit here and think this is my girl because it's not right. I just met her. We just developing an energy. So there's a part of you that you're trying to suppress it, man, damn, right, 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 damn, right here. Right. right. But on the other part, you have to tell yourself, I respect it. It got to happen. This is right. And so if anything, I think my face was just going from here to there, from here to there, like, damn, well, this is part of it. I don't like this. It's got to happen. So you're giving us that, those faces and those looks, yeah, you processing like, everything that's yeah. happening in that moment. Okay, I can deal with Cause that. Because we, we know we didn't like it. That's, yeah. that's very I mean, obvious. Because I, I didn't, like, I didn't like it for you. It. I didn't yeah. like it for you. I was on. I was screaming at the TV like, Paige, what the fuck is you doing, bro? Like, for <laughs> you know, real, but bro? But that's the dating process. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's Listen, the dating bro. process. It, am, I, am, I, am I wrong? No, you're right. Okay. Yeah. No, nah, don't tell her she's right, bro. <laughs> like, like I, 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 think, I, I think the cool thing about what MTV is doing with the love experiment is they're giving us the clean, modest version of what should be called courting. Okay? Yes. Like, they're giving you the, the, the PG version of courting. Because in 2023, like, the version of courting now is 1X if we're talking ratings. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you get 1X, 2X, and then 3X is full blown. You know what I'm saying? Like, in 2023, courting is 1X. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you're courting multiple people, you probably at one of them X's with more than one of those people. You see what I'm saying? And, and I, I want to say this, and then we're going to move on. And I want to say this in closing. When men decide to be vulnerable, right? The way that you said, right? And then we had to sit and we had to know that these are things that are happening because we're in this dating phase and people can do or whatever they want and, and, and have an open lines of communication. One of the things that I want to just put out there, when we start to give ourselves in that manner, we don't give ourselves in that manner to everybody. everybody. You that's know true. what I'm saying? So that's why we may act like we're cool with it or we can support it, you know what I'm saying? But we'll never sign up for a woman that we start to, because see, when you reciprocate that energy, okay? Mm -hmm. When you listen to me, when when you touch me and, and, and I exhale, like I, I feel like the world is at ease, you take the weight off of my shoulders, you have to realize that when you're dating multiple people, it's not just about the fact that you're not letting somebody smash or you're not letting somebody kiss you you're sharing that same intimacy with somebody else that I feel like belongs to me. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying about the, I don't I don't really do the whole dating multiple people thing. I think when I was out there like that, bro, I was just telling them all the same thing. I don't want to be with nobody. Like, I'm just doing me. Like, right. you know, I talk, I'm deal with whoever I want to deal with, whatever the case may be. Yeah. If something changed, we could have a conversation yeah, with change. Sure. But anyway, so. No, I like I like the way that you put that. And like I said, it's now communication, you know, because I mean, I get it, you know, going into episode four now because it's the vulnerability part. Right. How right. can I be vulnerable with you if I really don't know if if this is a safe space? But if you do feel like, you know, I provide that intimacy for you and I provide a, a, a I'm your exhale. Right. You know, I am your place of peace. Why can't you be vulnerable enough to just say that? Mm. Okay. Because I think that, you know, I know Why? I know we're going into episode four. Yeah. Because I think that there have been moments that I've seen on the show that Paige was extremely vulnerable with you. She just didn't show it out. I, we didn't see it on the camera. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. when you walked off from her, I thought you was walking off from her because you was walking off from her to keep from cussing her out. The world didn't know that she was going there to get a blanket, blanket because it was exactly. cold outside. Mm -hmm. And she said, thank you. Yeah. But I think had the cameras not been there, that thank you would have been something different. Like, I think she probably would have hugged you or embraced you. or Because she wanted, she needed reassurance in that moment. What she said in one of the confession things that she was like, yeah, if you want me, you know, I need a little bit of reassurance or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, like she was saying earlier, you know, that vulnerability moments, like we had to get our women out of thinking that if I get to a place where I feel like I can be vulnerable with you, you can't use that as ammunition against me to kick me, especially when I'm down. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. I don't I, I I think you told the story that you told at the we were at the end of episode three now. Yeah. With 
which is your viral moment right now, right? That's episode four. four. Yeah. That's episode four. Mm -hmm. yeah. Episode so, four so, is a continuation so, so, of. Episode okay, so it rolls okay. right into it. That's why I'm running it together like that. Okay, cool. So, the whole blanket scene, uh, the world. Sorry, I'm taking y'all a little fast. <laughs> um, we're going we're going to backtrack a little bit so we can tell you about the blanket thing, and uh, because we love how Kay sounds and her voice. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna let her thank talk you. about this this viral moment that's <laughs> across the world, and y'all are waiting to hear what Justin has to say about this moment. You know what I'm saying? To give him an opportunity to put it into perspective. So, uh, Miss Kay, you got the flow on this one. Okay, so episode four. First of all, let me let me say this. Okay. Let's talk about this conversation, though. You you guys were just having a conversation, and somebody throws out the random question: "What was the pettiest thing you've ever yeah, done?" Yeah, we're playing a little card game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what was the pettiest thing you've ever done in a relationship? All right. Yeah. And your response was, "You slept with your ex's sister, little sister, <laughs> little, <laughs> little, little in front of there." What in the hell happened that made you stoop so low? Matter of fact, we're going to pause right there before you answer that question. <laughs> All right, so the pettiest thing I've ever done after a breakup was I f***ed my ex little sister. What's wrong with you? So what the hell was you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking when you brought this one up? I wasn't thinking. Um, again, my mind was in so many places. Yeah. Um, before we even started the game night, you see where Paige is like, Justin, Come sit right here. And then Chris scoots over and he's like, Yeah, I'm gonna make some space for you. And I think I look at them like no. It's the fact that you still went and sat in the corner like a little baby. You went you ain't sit on the couch or something, bro. You went and sat in the corner, bro. Man, I wasn't thinking, right? Um I, I just wasn't. I just No, wasn't. I wasn't talking about you being honest in that moment. I'm talking about what the hell was you thinking when you pulled what you pulled, what you did, what you did. Man, listen. Um I was a lot younger. Okay. You know, I was, what, 23, whatever, still coming out of college. Yeah. Right? And so you in a, in an age where you don't think, right? You're chasing skirts, you're doing whatever, you having fun. Um, so I had dated someone, mm -hmm. and um, I knew of her sister, and then we'd broken up. Mm -hmm. And then I saw her sister later, and I didn't recognize her, right? She came to me and was like, hey, Justin, you remember me? And I'm looking at her like, no. <laughs> She's like, I'm such and such, such and such sister. And I'm like, oh, right. She's like, take my number, holler. Right. And so we started doing our thing, even though me and her sister had had a. So it wasn't, I think I presented it as a revenge thing. So maybe I was being petty playing that game. Maybe yeah. I was, right? Uh, to present it, maybe. Right? Um, to present it the way that it came off. But yeah. technically, what you're saying is you and a sister dated. This yeah. time ago, then circle around like year, couple months, couple yeah. months, year, couple months, probably a, a year or so. Okay, so yeah. a year later, you run into the little sister, yeah. and then y'all hit it off. And the little sister's and, then, and I'm like, ooh, yes, right, but still young. Yeah, right? you could think for sure. on the show, I'm 35, 36 years old. When I did this, I'm 22, 23 years old. Yeah, right? for sure. And a lot of things happened, and even in previous episodes, I said after my brother's murder a lot about my perspective on life changed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I spoke on things that was different. And I think there was a little annoyance with me with the fact that Paige and I were outside talking because she and I had sat so long and I talked about my growth journey. Yeah. And so I think a part of me was kind of like, are we really out here having this? We'd, we'd already talked about this growth journey. But to be fair to her, I don't think I should have chosen that answer to that game, I could have come up with something different. I mean, who cares what answer that you gave? Because here's the thing, yeah. like, and, and this is going to what I'm gonna say next. It's like, well, this is your past, right? Uh, Tamara can't get over Jamal because oh, he cheated. Sis, he didn't cheat on you, yeah, right? A lot you of know. Have. And then the thing is, like, you didn't cheat with my little sister, so like, you know what I mean? I don't even have a sister, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, it's like. Can we move past these things? Yeah. And it's, it feels like if you can't move past somebody else's past, then what is it that you're still holding on to in your life that's stopping you from being able to yeah, extend grace to the next right. individual? You right. know what I mean? It's like, are you still hurt yeah. that you were cheated on? Are you still hurt? Did somebody do something similar to this to you to make you want to pull me aside about yeah. my petty answer? You know what I mean? It makes you have to question these things, you know? And that's real. And I, I think back, to even watching me standing on that patio, how I'm looking, I'm just standing there like, it's happened, I'm good, like, it happened. I'm past right? that. Right, I don't you know, know what else 
you want me to say right now, this mean this happened a long time ago. Yeah. I think she may have had a petty moment responding the way that she did, but because of what you did share with her, she extended her grace by allowing you the opportunity to just reassure her that, hey, this is why it happened, you know, when it happened, you know, whatever the case may be. But why do you need the reassurance? That That's all I'm saying. I, I that, That's just me, though, because... I, and, and Go ahead. I, I think that we just have to realize, like, there's a million ways you can make seafood gumbo. Right. Everybody rut is different, right? It's going to taste good if they know what they're doing with their root. Excuse me. You know I'm what I'm saying? I'm going to say because it but might not. Yeah, yeah. As long as, <laughs> as, long as, as long as you can get the root right, then, you know, nine times out of ten, it, your, your gumbo will come out decent if you get right. the root right. But everybody has their own combination of ingredients and things that they do. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing when it comes to our black women and black men in today's society. I think everybody root is different. You know what I'm saying? The so problem. I think that some I think that some women it, it's not that they don't want to heal from their trauma or move past their trauma. It's just that sometimes some women do need that reassurance. And mm -hmm. and it's and so for some guys it's a handicap because they just don't have the time or the energy or want to do it. But there's always a probably a counterpart or another person that they're accustomed to being that person that does not matter doing that reassurance. That I, I get that. I totally get that. But here's the thing, right? You're not the same person you was 10, 15 years ago. Correct. So why do I need reassurance from the version of you right now to make sure that you're no longer that person? You're not that person. You know what I mean? I can't judge you for your past. <laughs> you know, I, I just I just can't I can't judge you for your past. So if you tell me, hey, I cheated on my ex girlfriend, and I'm like, okay, so what did you learn from that? You know, do you feel like you know, she was the one that got away after you cheated. Like, what what happened after that? You know what I mean? I'm more so just trying to figure out mentally, where are you now? I don't need you to reassure me about something that you did a long time ago. We I all got a past. We you. all done some things that we're not proud of. We all done some things that, you know, I would have, you could frown upon me on. Like, okay, why would you do something like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. We all have done that. So to hold you accountable for something that you've already moved past, forgave yourself for, and it didn't happen to me. That's 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 the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is everybody gets a different version of you. Right? I don't know that person that you was dealing with. I don't know her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's only a one side situation. That person could have literally like I'm not going to say deserve. Nobody deserves, you know, anything like that, but they weren't together. Mm -hmm. So clearly something happened. You know what I mean? Like clearly something happened, but the thing is everybody is a different version. Everybody is a, is just a different version with different people. Yeah. Right. All right. Like I could, you know, I'm just throwing this out here. But, you know, Justin and I could date and I can get a whole different person or a whole different version than what him and Paige got. Right. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Based on how I am and how we how whatever compatibility that we can formulate. Yeah, so that, that that's that's the thing. So it's like, why hold you accountable for what you did to this person? Long time ago, you forgave yourself, she forgave you, y'all moved on, it's over with, or whatever, and that was a version of you. I wonder what the black women saying about you in the community right now when they when they listening to this. I don't give a damn. Ooh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I really feel I feel like we should do better because this is what this is the part that holds us back right here. You right. know what I mean? Like if you can't move past that somebody cheated on their ex, you're not the ex. So why do you feel like this person is going to cheat on you because you're nine times out of 10 still holding on to something that happened to you in the past that you haven't had a chance to deal with. Mm -hmm. So maybe you need to deal with that and then decide to move forward with somebody because that's you. the problem we're, we're we're jumping into situations, not really understanding our triggers, not really understanding our traumas, not really understanding where these things are coming from, but holding the next person account person accountable for what they've done in their past. Gotcha. You. you need to check you. I got you. I, I feel you. Let I feel you. And that's called accountability. And that's something I feel like our sisters be lacking Let sometimes. We got to have accountability, ladies. <laughs> accountability. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, this boy is singing over here. God Jesus. Has spoken. Let the church <laughs> <say> amen. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So I, I think we're all 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 on the same page here. That, yeah. You know that 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 came out. You know what I'm saying? It was something that's just with time, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, and I understand it because one of my best clips on TikTok was one of the things where I was talking about. You know, like almost 15 years ago. Yeah. When I had first got a decent job, 
just got married and I really wasn't making that much money and I kind of felt some type of way because my ex-wife asked me could I make more money and you know what I'm saying it went crazy on TikTok and everybody had something to say about it because of course all the sister was like you damn right if that's the kind of money you was making I would have asked you to make some other money too and then the guys were on the defense like well why is that not good enough or how did she say it or whatever the case may be so you know what I'm saying like my problem is why I tell you I'm sorry ex-wife um but why I tell you personally get out here and make some more money when yeah, we ain't gonna talk about that. I'll just no, 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 no. I'll just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out here, okay? Ladies, ladies, let me tell you what you're, what you, as a help me, because you're a help me. All right, this is for my ladies. You are a help me. You are there to find a purpose aligned with your man's purpose. So if you see that he's lacking somewhere, that is your job to come into play to pick up his lack. Okay, I'm sorry. I gotta throw this out there because this bothers me. Like this really grinds my gut. This, this is like a itch I can't fucking scratch. You understand me? <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. We gotta get. We go. We go get back to it because we, we, you know, we don't want this. Type, we, don't want, we don't want y'all. I know y'all probably skip it around or y'all trying y'all. to stay true to it so y'all can see what's going on. But so, so we 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 seen the interaction that happened when you decide to have a petty moment because you felt. To be petty because of what happened leading up to that. Uh, so now you've had an opportunity to make things right uh, by having a small conversation with her. And she kind of left us on a cliffhanger. We're saying that, you know, she needed to think about it or process what still had happened or whatever the case may be. But then you decide that you want to show that black men that care. And, yeah. and pay attention to the details that are given to us because they always give us the key. Just gotta listen. Yeah. They'll give us the key, and uh, we should we see a, a, a recap of a conversation you had with her that about her favorite color. Yeah, and then you show up to her room, and uh, you show up with uh, with the green skittles and all the other green stuff. Aww. So tell us about tell us a little bit about what, what put you up to that, and, and tell us a little bit about where that you experience. get the money for that. I had it in my pocket. Too. Oh, okay. No, no, because no, like sometimes they take everything and they, you know, I guess they yeah, give you so, stipends or something. So, so it went, it went multiple ways. So there was opportunities where you could ask for okay. somebody to do something for you, but for me, my thoughtfulness was, this is who I'm pursuing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pursue her. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to wait for opportunities. So a lot of times you're sitting around waiting for somebody to say, "This is your next time to go see her." We had phones. You saw on the show, they're, they're, people are texting, right? Mm-hmm. So I have an opportunity to have a conversation with her. Okay, so I want to see you. I want to see you. Okay, well, I learned that you like green lime skittles. You learned that your favorite color is green. I learned that you love alkaline water. We don't have nothing on set. So I'm going to walk down to 7-Eleven. I'm going to get all the things that I know that you like, that you are craving on this set. And this gives me an opportunity to now come to your room and talk to you. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the other night because... I know we had conversations before, but so many things were going on. Things was in my head, things was in your head. So let's just sit down and talk. And we did. Um, we made it right. Um, and I wanted to show that I'm paying attention and that I'm trying my best to be intentional despite all the chaos that's going on around us. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. Um, and then that led us to the music night, the, the open mic night. But I needed her to know that despite it all, no matter how I might have been acting, how you perceive my behavior, whatever i'm still paying attention i still see you um and i remember everything that you ever told me and this is how i'm going to show up did you want to kiss her like when you was getting up and she was like hey i'll see you later and you were getting ready to walk to the door did you want to kiss her again i probably did i can't even remember Um, you said i probably did yes you did i probably did you did um just just own it just say yes Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what I do like about the show though. I like that you know you can take the initiative, right? Instead of waiting, because a lot of times like it's like you're learning as you go. Yeah. So for instance, when Paige let go of Preston, right? She had like she let him go after mm-hmm. the elimination. Elimination, yeah. right? So then that was you know a step to say, okay, hey, anybody can get eliminated, right? And then right, you right. have Justin coming in, like you know what? I'm not waiting for the next time that I have. To spend with this woman, I'm going to take the initiative yeah. to do what I got to do. So I like the fact that it's making you guys like see yeah. different things to take the initiative Absolutely. and just do it versus waiting for it. And I think yeah. that's also too a nobody, part of the love experience. Nobody told us that we could do that. Nobody told you mm-hmm. that you could use your phone and create dates for yourself. 
But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, hell, I got a phone. She got a phone. They gave them to us. There you go. Hey, can I come see you? Can I come? And then I just started doing more and more of that. So while we sitting around, got dead time, and the women are in their suite, I'm in my suite. Hey, I want to see you. I want to come talk to you. Right? Those conversations where you saw me sitting there, what's your favorite color? Let me write that. Put that So it's no rules yeah. for real. It's yeah. no rules to this. And that's, that's, that's the point. Like, it's no yeah. rules to this. They should have threw some snakes in there. Like some niggas that was in there just to get some pom pom. That's what uh, jo- what is his name? Joshua, Jeshia, Jeshia, Josiah. That's him, right? That's that's his role. Okay, that's what Josiah give me. Josiah, man, that's my boy, man. That's Josiah cool. I just said they should have thrown some, throw some, 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 some hanky panks in there, bro. The businessman. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. I can't believe that's what he made his title. The damn businessman, Josiah. What was you thinking? They out though. They bring him in and toss him out, toss him out. But he just put the businessman. That's what. That's the best you came up with. The businessman. So we we right now we're leading up to the finale of season season um episode uh, episode four. Mm-hmm. We're leading up to the finale of wait, episode it's only five four. episodes? No, 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 no. I mean finale as in the, our, the of context of what oh, we're, oh, what we're talking understood, about. Understood. Uh, so uh, we, we 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 get y'all get the y'all get the text message about the opportunity to express yourselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in, in whatever way you want to or whatever, it's going to be a date night with everybody. Y'all get ready to go out. Um, what made you decide that you were going to write poetry? So a lot of things people don't know is I grew up writing. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I got away from it as I got older, um, but I can still do it if pushed or if I need to, if I feel like I want to. I actually wrote two. Right? Okay. The first one that I wrote was a lot longer and a lot meaner, um, but I decided it's not the one I was going to go to because I was a part of me was upset for the fact that I had already opened myself up once and then – whether you like it or not, we played a game. I told you about something that happened when I was younger. And so I was slightly annoyed with the fact that I'm showing you a piece of me and it and feels like judged. you're using it against me and judging me. And right. Making, mm-hmm. right. And so I kind of wrote a poem that spoke to that, to the fact that they say black men don't show love. They say black men don't do this. They say this. But when we do do it, this is what we get. Right. Um, and that's the angle that I took. And... Um, Although the show didn't show my entire poem, when I read it, she got up, she hugged me, and she said, I get what you're saying now. Um, and we had a little moment there. So I, I guess MTV was just being messy and they were just looking at the ratings because what they, sh- the, the the confession they showed of us, Paige, reacting to your poem was, she said, <laughs> what was Justin doing? What was that? I don't know what he had going on. Which I get, if I was a producer, I probably would have took the, the lovey dovey clip and so, put it to the side and showed that as well. So. Mm-hmm. Because of the fact I can't really disclose everything that happened that night, um, there was a moment earlier that had nothing to do with Paige where I showed my ass. Mm, Okay. Gotcha. Got it. Okay. Well, we got to figure out where he he showed his ass and why he showed his ass. You know what I mean? But I love that because I I was saying that before we start rolling. It's just like, you know, us women, we always want you. We always tell y'all, be open, be honest, be vulnerable. And the moment that you do it, we judge you. Yeah. We we, we yeah. want to call you simp. So I don't even know what that word means. But, you yeah. know, we, we label these things, and I, I, I just don't like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know I hate that. You, you say something, and then, hey, yeah, have you ever done this? Yeah, I did. Oh, so you... You know what, never mind. Yeah, right, okay. and, then, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, I want you, I want black men, and I want my black men. So I always be open, honest, and, mm. you know, just transparent with me. Yeah. You know, I, this this is the safe space. And we and we honestly want that, bro. But it's it's extremely hard to find a woman that can just deal with all of that. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying that it's y'all fault. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like it's it's like I had an old school person tell me a couple of days ago. Like matter of fact, it wasn't an old school person. It was my therapist. She told me. She says that is a problem with black men, and you know, it's a generational thing mm-hmm. because the this is how y'all have been raised or this is what we tell y'all y'all have to be and slowly but surely on the inside like it's like it's just tearing y'all it's tearing y'all up i'm saying like like not being able to talk because of possibly being just or being called something of less than a man or whatever Mm -hmm. case may be like granddaddy my granddad didn't teach me my granddad i seen my granddaddy cry two times in my whole life Mm -hmm. and that was two deaths like i don't like he didn't cry you know what I'm saying? He was mean all the time, but you knew he loved you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it, 
it, it's kind of hard to, to to explain it, but I knew my grandfather loved me. Like it just, but I knew he didn't play the radio neither. Yeah. But I ain't seen no emotion. I seen a man that's gonna go to work. He's gonna work hard. He's gonna provide for his family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You weren't gonna see a whole lot of whole lot of emotional things out of him. You know what I'm saying? And he, every man that was a pillar in my life, I, 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 they kind of sort of reciprocated those those, those same things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, even when the vulnerable side of me has come out, it's the result of you hear a simp and weak and and you this and that and and then you know people females feel like they can treat you in or do it do you in a kind of way just because yeah. the fact like you kind of sort of trying to be a little open with them or be honest and open with them and just this is this is the person i want to give you because i want to share something with you that i don't share with anybody else yeah. and it just had to be it, it's just like how y'all feel about y'all pum pum man at some point in time you just had to treat it like that 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 side you want to give to somebody you had to treat it like a jewel it's mm -hmm. not for everybody it's, it's you had to lean towards your discernment on who you're going to share that with because it's a delicate thing when it comes to us I agree with you. And I think a lot of the problem is too, like you said, it's a generational thing, right? And the, uh, the most, the biggest thing is that we say we want things, but don't know how to receive it when we get it. Like we say, we want an emotionally available man. You get an emotionally avail available man, mm -hmm. you get that, but because you're not used to that and you don't know what that looks like and you're used to somebody falling at your whim and doing everything you want or, you know, just you're arguing with your feelings and this person is just allowing you to get away with you arguing with your feelings. You don't know what that looks like. I got you. you know? And that makes sense. Are we through? Man, look. Oh, shoot. I ain't know. Like, he just cut the damn music on. Just don't do rude that. Hell. That just, wasn't rude. Just, that's rude that, as hell. That, how was that How'd rude? You know we was done. We won't done. Nah, like, I think just that was a done. solid ass point that you make as we was getting ready to get you up done? out of here. Are you done? I was going to make just one little final pitch. But Go you ahead, got, you got to. It, it, we got time just for you to make. Because I was just going to. I always end it with the music at the end. That's just, that's just not my formality. <laughs> like, you can go look at any episode <laughs> on the channel. You're going to hear the music going on towards the end of the show. Uh, but I did want to allow for you to to really just, you know what I'm saying, tell the people what the love experience has meant to you thus far. Yes. Why they should go check it out, man. And if you could give them a cliffhanger to be like, you don't want to miss Tuesday night. Like, you know what I'm saying? We want to end the episode like that. All right. So what the love experiment gave me was an opportunity to let my guard down. Something I hadn't done in years. And that's what, what I wanted to kind of bring myself back to is when we were talking about um, your vulnerability um, and so I wanted to be a little bit more fair to Paige and the other women who went through this process because you have to think there are so many voices that are going in and out your ears at the same time so you might want to think this way or have a mindset of yours but somebody is putting this in your ear putting this in your ear saying Justin said this he said this he said this and then they're like go and you got all these thoughts going through so I just wanted to give her that benefit of the doubt with the fact that those things probably were all happening at once. And this is new for her, new for me at the same time. But going back to the love experiment, it was an opportunity for me to let my guard down, something I hadn't done in years, um, date in a way I'd never done, and actually show my personality before the world. So when it comes to episode five, man, these people, they're up in Whistler, right? They're on a ski trip. There's three guys, three women. They got this phenomenal setup. And they you got, ain't there. No, I ain't there. Right, Dang, why are you telling us that? <laughs> it's, it's, it, they show that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are, okay. We, we've already seen that. Yeah, I ain't up there, right? Um, but I'm back at the house with the guys. We're having a good time. Um, but some things are going on. Last episode ended with um, Mars talking about Jamal calling Tam T-Rex. And mm -hmm. there are other things going on. So wait to see. Man, it looks like there's a lot happening. I don't know everything that happened there because I wasn't there. It looks exciting. You don't want to miss it. These episodes are getting hotter by the week, and you got to check it out. That's what's that up, part, man. Period. That's what's up, man. So, man, uh, there you have it, man. Justin Lockett, man, the Love Experiment, man, airing right now on MTV every Tuesday, man. You can see a new episode, man. And you're seeing this and hearing this right now. This means that guess what? Tomorrow you need to be locked in because it's airing. So, you know, I want to thank y'all for locking in, for listening, for oh, checking wait us a out. Minute. I got you. This is my show. I let you have your second. <laughs> Middle no, of the show no, while I say the case. About me. Okay, go ahead. Justin, we gotta tell everybody where they can follow Justin. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You need to let me do my thing. My you had the case of my own segment <laughs> over there. I gave you my your apologies. corner, you know. But look, man, I'm your boy Chester, man. Again, thanks so much for listening, bro, for tapping in, man. If you have not liked the video, do that right now. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting on? And most importantly, give us some comments, man. We use those comments for uh more content in the future, man, and give us things to, to talk about that you may.
may necessarily want to hear about. Uh, so uh, as we get ready to get out of here, man, y'all know how I always do. We always spin the table, man, and let the guests introduce themselves so they can tell you exactly where they can find them. So we're going to do that right now. All right. Well, I'm Justin. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, all at Life and Times JL and at JML underscore foundation, because you need to find out the work that the Jared Michael Lockett Foundation is doing in the community as we speak out against gun violence and we uplift these young black men into becoming upstanding gentlemen in our community. I love that. I love that. All right. You can follow me. I is K Simone Simone with the net as I T S K C O one on all platforms. And there you have it, man. Thanks again for checking it out. We're getting out of here. I am your boy, LeChester, man. And y'all know how we always do, man. Everybody look at that center camera right there, which is our group shot. And y'all know how we get up out of this thing. Peace.